Well, hey there, you two. Matt M. Roy back again. Well, got another uh, computer video for you. Um, I was on Craigslist the other day, and uh, I was perusing the ads, and eh, not finding much as usual. And then my buddy Frank called me. Uh, this video is actually going to be a shout-out to him. Um, he needed some help uh, finding drivers for a computer he had. So I decided to go over there, and I was able to get it working within about an hour. And then he asked me, uh, am I interested in maybe buying uh, another laptop from him? And I said, I'm always interested in computers, you know me. So I asked to see what it was, and he pulled this out. Um, this is not at all was, is what I was expecting. Usually when he tells me a laptop, it's an actual laptop, like... I got my Dell Core i7 from him, and I also got that other Dell uh, Inspiron as well. But this is something a little different. This is made by Asus, and this is what is called an Ultrabook. Um, it actually, to me, it's more of a convertible. Um, the model of mine is the S200E, but this one differs in the fact that this was purchased in Japan. Uh, this this one was purchased um, last year, uh, sometime in 2013, by a military gentleman, uh, brought back to the States, and of course, my friend Frank bought it, and then I bought it from him. The closest I could find is the American version, and this is what the American version has in it. It has Windows 8, uh, which this one does as well. I upgraded to 8.1. Um, this is where it differs. The American version of this has a Core i3 uh, 3217 CPU, whereas this one is not running on something quite as fast. This is actually an Intel-based uh, processor. And let me see if I can get that. You can see it is touchscreen. So you go under Settings and PC Info. And you can see right there, it is running an Intel Celeron 1007U CPU running at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. And it has 2 gigabytes of RAM, which I am hoping to upgrade to uh, 4 gigabytes. I'm going to take the bottom of this apart later and see how the RAM is situated. Um, this is a dual-core CPU, believe it or not, even though it is a Celeron. I'm not too familiar with the newer Celerons, but I did hear that they went. some of them went to dual-core, and this is a dual-core CPU. It's fairly snappy. Uh, let me go back and show you guys some of the other things. Everything else on here, I think, is the same. It's got the precision touchscreen for intuitive enjoyment. Um, sleek and light. It is fairly light. I'd say this only weighs about a pound, if that. Um, the Sonic Master is installed on here. You can see right here it says uh, Sonic Master and it shows a picture of a uh, graphic here. Very good sound quality. Uh, and then it says feel nature smooth, uh, na natural smoothness with the Asus Smart Gesture touchpad and two second instant on. So basically you can make your gestures on here. Like if I was to go like this, separate my fingers from the middle, you can see the page gets uh, bigger or smaller. It actually zooms in on the page. This also works in Microsoft Office as well. And because this is a touch screen, you can work it just like a laptop as well. So, very interesting little system. Uh, it does have a webcam on top, which I have not tried. Uh, what's this? Oh, Java wants to update like it always does. I don't think the camera is actually going to pick that up, but the webcam is actually right here. Uh, nice keyboard. I'm actually very surprised for a 11.6 inch screen has a very nice size keyboard. Um, even with my what they call meat cleaver fingers, I have no trouble typing with this. Um, as you can see, there's literally no wear on this keyboard. I don't think this computer was hardly ever used. From what I understand, it was purchased by, again, a military person who used it when he was on service. And I guess he came back and decided to sell it. Go ahead and take a look at the ports on the side here. Uh, you can see we have an HDMI out, which is very nice. Um, I believe that is, that, is, that is the Ethernet port, and you actually have to pull this little door down to get it to work, but I'll probably never use that because this has wireless N built in. It does have a USB 3.0 port. You can tell that by the blue color of the plastic in there. 
a USB 2.0 port, a uh, Kensington lock port, which is kind of oddly placed. Usually I fi you find those on the back, but I guess because of the way this is designed, the screen covers most of the back. They had to put it somewhere else, but I would have probably still put it more towards the back because that's, that's kind of awkward. I mean, you have to have the lock and the cable coming out to here, but I guess that was design choice. Again, I don't care because I'm never going to actually get this locked up anywhere. Um, let's see, nothing on the front other than the lights. You have the power light, battery, hard drive, wireless, and uh, cap locks. And turning over to this side, we have, going from back to front, we have a VGA out. Uh, another USB 2.0 port. You can see it does have the black uh, plastic on there. Um, a headphone microphone combination port. So to use the microphone portion, I believe you have to have one of those splitter cables. And one SD card slot. So this is fairly nicely featured. Um, it's not one of the ones that you can actually flip the screen over and use it just like a tablet because that's as far back as the screen actually goes. Um, it is running Windows 8, as most of you guys know, I'm not a big fan of Windows 8, but since it's a touch screen interface, I really don't mind that as much. Uh, you can see that it came in many, a few different colors originally, at least in the States. This one is the silver top. Uh, it looks like it had a black, a red, that's probably the silver, and I think that's a graphite color right back there. Um, some of the differences, I mean, pretty much it's the same as the American version, except for the uh, processor and the memory. The American version comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM uh, versus the 2. Um, again, I did update this to Windows 8.1. And I'm still trying to get used to the touch screen. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. This is actually my first uh, touch screen Ultrabook, so I'm still learning as I go. So if you go over here, we'll go into PC Info one more time because I want to show you something else here. Um, I, of course, named it Matt's Ultrabook. Now, one thing I, I noticed, and I didn't realize this, Windows 8 had the Experience Index, but when I upgraded to 8.1, um, it removed that particular feature. I guess that it's not as important as it used to be. Um, I, I, I had forgotten about that the Windows 8.1 does not actually show you an experience, which, again, I don't generally go by, but it is at least a decent benchmark to have to tell you whether the computer is going to be a good gaming system, a good, maybe, HD movie streamer, or if it's just going to be like a word, glorified word processor and maybe just some light email use. So, something I will miss, but I can live without it. I'm going to go into Device Manager. You can see that it has just the basic things. It does have Bluetooth, which is nice. Which means I could get a, have some Bluetooth headsets and bring this to anywhere. Bring it to the beach and listen to some music. Um, oh, one other thing I want to show you guys. It does have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is really nice. Because if I need to do a backup, if I'm working at a client's house and I need to do a backup on site, I can pop this out. I can I can take my um, hard drive enclosure, hook it up into the USB port, and do a backup right there. Whereas that i7 I would never carry around with me. It's just too big and bulky, and let's face it, I'd be afraid something would happen to it. Um, it's an Intel HD graphics, which you would expect from a system like this. If there's anything else interesting. Uh, it's a 720p monitor, so it's uh, 1366 by 768, which is more than enough for me. I wouldn't need anything more for a system like this. Um, oh, let's show you the processors real quick. It does show that it's dual core, so you see it run it's running basically two different cores of that uh, 1007. And I looked up the benchmarks are pretty good for this CPU. They're actually fairly close in some tests to the Core i3. So I've noticed it's a pretty uh, snappy system. I was actually playing the built-in pinball game on it the other day. All right, now I'll show you guys a look at the bottom of this. You can see that uh, the model number is an Asus S200E. Uh, again, this is not available here in the States. It's only available, I believe, in Japan. 
and maybe a few other, uh, maybe some of the China locations, but here, this particular model you cannot get in the United States with, the, with these specs. You can see it is made for Windows 8, and I'll hold it there for a sec. You guys can pause the video if you want to read the rest of that. Um, and I'm thinking this shouldn't be too bad to upgrade the memory. I can see there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine screws. And I believe the bottom cover will just pop off, and that should expose the uh, memory and the hard drive. I'm not going to be upgrading that hard drive, but I really do want to try to put uh, at least four gigabytes of RAM in here. As you can see, except for a few little scratches, I mean, there's a little scratch here, and then just a few little scuffs on the edge here. It's all in very good shape. You know, it's got it's brushed aluminum, and I'll tell you, this computer is very, very sturdy. Uh, you, the hinges are strong on here. You can tell it's something that's not going to fall apart within a week or so. So this is just my review of the Asus 200E Ultrabook. And I would definitely call this an Ultrabook, even because it, it is a touch screen, and of course it does not have an optical drive. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody. Don't forget, there is one other thing I want to show you guys about this. Because it was originally from Japan, it actually has this funky little power adapter. Uh, this is a converter right here that lets it go to a US style voltage. I'll unplug that real quick so you can see. You can see that's the US plug, but if you pull this end out, you can see it has the, I believe that's the Japanese plug. I'll have to double check on that. Um, but this is just a converter, a voltage converter, so we can use it in the United States. He first showed me that I thought that was pretty interesting, and that just proves that this particular system was definitely purchased overseas. Well, now I think I'm finally completed with this review. Again, like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day, everybody.